Hi, Russ of Aquarimax Pets here. If you want to produce large quantities of Daphnia, check out the link near the end of this video. But if you want to produce small to moderate quantities of Daphnia with a minimum of effort and space, here's how I do it. You'll need two similar containers of about half a gallon to about five gallon capacity. I'm using gallon jars here, but six quart shoebox tubs, two gallon buckets, small aquariums, they're all possibilities. Avoid metal containers though, and make sure that all containers are free of soaps, detergents, or other contaminants. A straw or a turkey baster, a Daphnia starter culture, sources for Daphnia cultures are listed in the description, and I am one of those sources. I fill my containers with dechlorinated tap water. Depending on the strain of Daphnia you're working with and the quality of your tap water, you may need to use water from an established aquarium. Just make sure that it doesn't contain any hydra, which can easily live undetected in aquariums, and if they were to get into your Daphnia culture, they would eventually eat all of your Daphnia. I like to add a small snail to the jar as a cleanup crew. I prefer to add a single ram's horn snail that is too young to have mated, then I don't have to worry about too many snails. You can add more than one snail if you want, but if you do, you'll have to control the snail population periodically. There are other small snail species that could work too. The uh, Physa genus, often known as pest snails, they're kind of football shaped and a lot smaller than ram's horns, they work fine as well. When the Daphnia arrive, allow them to acclimate according to the seller's instructions. If they did not come with instructions, once the Daphnia shipping bag has sat for long enough to approach room temperature, I generally recommend pouring the Daphnia out of the bag directly into a container without any other water in it and slowly adding some of your water to it via drip acclimation with a piece of airline tubing. Once you have diluted the shipping water by about 50%, you can fill up the container the rest of the way with your water, which you may do over several days if you want to be cautious. Daphnia can be fed a variety of food items. For the past year or so, I've been using baker's yeast as a staple food, I mix it with a small amount of Haematococcus algae powder, which I think improves the results. You can buy some of that algae powder down in the description. I add enough of the algae to the yeast so that when I mix them both with water, it becomes kind of an orangey red color. You can add about one half to one teaspoon of this dry powder to about two ounces of purified water and mix thoroughly before use. Keep this mixture refrigerated. Initially, feed the Daphnia very lightly, just a few drops of this liquid mixture. Use the straw or the turkey baster to stir the culture water to suspend the food in the water column. After feeding, there should be a slightly hazy look to the water. Feed again when the water looks clear. At first, this may take several days, but as the culture grows, you will likely need to feed daily or almost daily, gradually increasing the number of drops of food as well, until you reach the maximum capacity of your chosen size of container. To harvest small quantities to feed individual fish, Use the straw or the turkey baster, a large pipette, something like that. If you use the straw, you can just hold it like this, with your finger over the top of the straw, and then allowing it to fill with water and Daphnia, pulling it up, and then letting it go over a container where you want to release them. To harvest larger quantities, you can use a fine mesh net, simply netting the desired quantity, or pouring about half of the culture jar, the water in the culture jar, through the net into another container. That's discard that water that you poured out and replace with clean water. This of course also serves as a water change. So you should use this method to harvest once every week or two. The water change and reduction in population density typically stimulates a boom in reproduction. So by harvesting frequently, you can help keep your culture healthy and productive. Some detritus at the bottom of the jar is normal. In fact, I believe it to be beneficial as it likely harbors a lot of microorganisms that help maintain a stable culture. If this detritus layer gets excessive, you can use a turkey baster or even a gravel vacuum to remove some but not all of it as needed. You can keep a Daphnia jar culture going for years using this method, but to ensure success, I highly recommend you keep two cultures going at a time. That's the reason why I recommended two containers at the beginning. Not only will this result in roughly double the Daphnia production, but it will also provide a backup in case of a crash. The only reason I don't keep two jar cultures going is that I have two much larger cultures going in a 20 gallon and a 40 gallon tank to produce much larger quantities of Daphnia. 
And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, if you'd like to know all about my method for more intensive Daphnia culture, you can check out my video here. Thanks for watching. I post videos every Friday with live streams and shorts during the week as well. Please feel free to share, rate, comment if you haven't already, subscribe, and then tap the bell for all notifications so you don't miss my next video. And now to acknowledge our patrons. <laughs>